All right, welcome everybody to our second lesson in our expressions unit. Today, we're gonna to be looking at expressions that involve variables and trying to evaluate those expressions if I tell you the value of the variable. So in our last lesson, we just looked at numerical expressions um, like the one on the left, 50 minus 10 times two. We can evaluate that using the order of operations, 10 times two is 20 and 50 minus 20 is 30. Right, so that has a value, but the expression on the right, 50 minus 10 times X, it's not clear what the value of that is because we don't know what the value of X is. X is a variable, which means it represents an unknown number. So does that mean it's impossible to evaluate it? Well, it's not impossible. If we know the value of the variable, then we can evaluate these expressions. So if we learn the value of X, then I can substitute that value in. So if I find out that X was equal to three, you know, I could put a three right there and then I could actually evaluate the expression. But until I know the value of the variable, I can't actually evaluate the expression. I can't find its value. So let's look at how we evaluate an expression like this once we know the value. So um, the first thing you're going to do is substitute the value of the variable using a set of parentheses. And the parentheses are really important for a couple reasons. One of them is, like we talked about in our integers unit, we want to make sure that it's clear whether um, a negative sign is a negative sign or a subtraction sign. And so if we put it in a set of parentheses, it's clear that it was a negative value, that sort of thing. It's just always a good practice to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression, 50 minus 10 times, and then using a different color to remind you, I'm going to put in the value of X because it says let X equal two. So that's our first step. We substitute the value in, we take the value and put it in. The next one is we evaluate the expression using the order of operations. Well, this is easy, I've already done this. 10 times two is 20, write the rest of the expression and 50 minus 20 is 30. It's really as simple as that. So we're only adding one extra little layer on top of what we were doing in our last lesson, which is the substitution level. So let's take a look at a, an example of this. Oh, I should mention, now that we are using variables, you're going to start to see a number next to a parentheses or a number next to a variable Mathematicians are lazy about multiplication. Anytime they can put a number next to a parentheses or a number next to a variable, they're going to, and that means to multiply. So let's look at um, a couple examples here. So for these expressions, it says let x equal three and y equal negative two. So now you see that four x, right? That means four times x. It means whatever x is, I want to do four times that thing. So I'm going to start by rewriting the problem. I'm going to put times and then in my color, I'm going to put three because the value of X is three plus 18 oops, over and again, three. All right, so now off to the side, I'm going to remind myself my order of operations. Grouping symbols, exponents, multiply and divide, add and subtract. Now, are there grouping symbols in this problem? Well, technically there are parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside them. Technically there's a fraction bar, but there's nothing to do other than just evaluate the fraction. So we can skip that. Um, are there any exponents? There are no exponents. Is there any multiplying and dividing? Yes, there's both. So first I'm going to do my multiplying because it comes first in the problem. Four times three is 12 plus 18 over three. Then I'm going to do my dividing. 18 over three is six. Bring down the rest of the problem. And lastly, I've done all of my multiplying and dividing. Is there adding and subtracting? Yes, 12 plus six is 18. Man, I'm gonna have to get better at writing an 18 if I'm gonna put so many 18s in these problems. Okay, so what did I do? I substituted in three for the value of X. Then I did my multiplying, my dividing, my adding, and I'm done. Let's do one more. All right. So remember, I'm going to rewrite this problem. 
except I'm going to put in all the values in parentheses. So X is a three, 12 plus X should be a three, Y should be a negative two, and then I'm gonna close that parentheses. And now hopefully you see why it's useful to put the value of the variable inside parentheses because we don't want it to say three minus two. We want it to say three times negative two. And that's what this problem tells us. Okay, so going back again to our order of operations, we've got grouping symbols, exponents, multiply and divide, add and subtract. Are there any grouping symbols in this problem? Well, yes, in this case there are. There's a set of parentheses with a bunch of math inside of it. We need to go inside that set of parentheses and start over. So what's inside there? We've got the 12 plus three times negative two. So what should we do first? Well, there's addition and there's multiplication. Multiplication would come first. So let's do three times negative two and we get negative six. And then I'll write the rest of the problem. So we've got a negative three outside here. We've got 12 plus negative six. All right. So we're not done with that grouping symbol. We're not done with the stuff inside the parentheses. We need to uh, add 12 and negative six. And as we remember from our integers unit, 12 plus negative six is six. And then we have a three outside the parentheses. And then our last step here, we've got two numbers in parentheses next to each other. That means multiply. Three times six is 18. So again, we get a value of 18. And I wrote it a little bit better this time. Anyway, that's what I'm looking for. Just like with numerical expressions, every layer of this has a value of 18. So make sure you're writing the entire expression every single time. All right, good luck.